they've taken all the image image editors and all that. Oh, that is not a so that would be a good job. That actually I look like a hipster. Look. I like, hey, <laughs> would you like a soy latte? I feel like I'm making you a, a craft cocktail. This week in startups is brought to you by Lemon.io. Hire pre-vetted remote developers. Get 15% off your first four weeks of developer time at lemon.io slash twist. Fidelity Private Shares. Manage your cap table and data room. Get faster, more accurate 409A valuation and fully automate your next financing round. Visit fidelityprivateshares.com. Mention our podcast and receive 20% off your first year paid subscription. And CLA. Innovation takes balance. CLAs, CPAs, consultants, and wealth advisors can help you get from startup to where you want to end up. Get started now at claconnect.com slash tech. All right, everybody. Welcome back to This Week in Startups. Our guy, Sandeep Madra, is back. He's been busy. Grok is cooking with oil. How are you doing, my friend, Sonny? I am doing excellent. Uh, it's been a really, really busy and we said this, remember, it's going to be a Q4 plus one. So we're now actually in Q4 and we are cooking. We are cooking. It is, we're 10, 11, 12 days in by the time we publish this. And J. Cal, tell me about your September in Q4 and like what's going on because. You know, I am settled in here in Austin. It's been absolutely fantastic. And um, we're doing our next uh, class of Founder University, not our ninth cohort. Uh, you know, that's where we have people come for 12 weeks. It's virtual, 250 teams, two or three founders, each team, hopefully a technical co founder or two. And then. Um, we invest in the top 10% of those. We might put 25K in if they want like that first friends and family check, or we'll put 125K in, you know, if they want the standard like incubator deal in Silicon Valley. And then, uh, you know, what will be different this time is I'll meet them all for the week one in San Francisco with some of our partners. Then my plan is in week six, nine, and 12, perhaps the top performing companies, the ones we invest in, have them come to Austin for the day or two, hang out with me, go to the salt lick, have a little brisket, some uh, bison ribs, you know, the one that broke my tooth in half. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Um, maybe a little Terry ba Black's beef rib, which I took Chamath to for the first time and, you know, just jam out with them about their vision. And I am super um, excited just because so many of these companies are able to go so far with such a small amount of capital, especially when their teams of two or three because of AI specifically. Uh, and it's really uh, wonderful to see how fast people are working. And then I'm very excited about O1. I've been using ChatGPT O1 version to the point at which it it gives me like a warning about credits, you know, and says, hey, you got to take a pause. That's how often I'm using it. Uh, so it's really amazing. I had just while we start here, uh, we're taping on a Friday. I'm not sure when this is going to come out, but we taped on Friday, October 11th. Last night was the a cyber cab big reveal. I wasn't able to make it. Sorry to uh, my friends over at Tesla. Uh, but I was traveling this week for Saks's LP day earlier in the week. So I couldn't do two trips in one week. What were your thoughts when you saw uh, the cyber cab, the cyber bus? Uh, and Optimus, especially in relation to AI and where we're at. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a great lead out. Um, and I've been thinking about this all day and we talked a little bit about it in our group chat. Okay. Um, let's go in that order. I think the cyber cab is really a culmination of everything that, you know, Tesla has been doing, which is building cars, building great electric cars, um, you know, Bu uh, building on autonomous technologies with sort of all the in-camera learning and, you know, their ability to basically, um, you know, put that all together in a form factor now without a, you know, uh, steering wheel and or pedals. Uh, quick aside, I heard a number of people say, put a steering wheel and pedals on that and I'll buy it. <laughs> Just I mean, I literally said that as well. And I think oh, yeah, that okay. this was in the Walter Isaacson uh, book about Elon where Franz or whatever, you know, it was a big internal debate. And I think Elon went with the kind of burn the boats, uh, according to that approach of, hey, we, we just got to force our autonomy, we got to take the steering wheel out, etc. Um, and so maybe there'll be the what they were calling, I think the model two, which is the two door hatchback, I want to buy that two door cyber cab so much. 
I would buy two of them immediately because they just look so fun and, and cute and zippy to drive. Can you imagine a, a, a Tesla powertrain on something, you know, of that footprint? It would be unbelievable. It would be like that Nissan, um, or is it Toyota, the GTR that all the racers like yeah, to do yeah, for yeah, drifting yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff? It yeah, would be yeah. like a, a Mini Cooper, you know, you get that like really small thing. I would love to put fat tires on that and feel it. I love the design too. I like the fact that this feels like kind of the love child of the Cybertruck and the Model yep. Y or Model 3. It's kind of got its own like thing going on there. So yep. aesthetically, I love it. I love the vision yep. of it, obviously, for self-driving. What did you think of the bus? To me, that, I think it's an RV. I, I look yeah, at that thing well, and I, I don't know if you saw, did you see my tweet that I did about I it? Did. Yeah, yeah. yeah so did, let's talk about the bus because I thought the well, let's bus. Well, let's finish on the cap. Okay. So I think, I think what they've been able to do is bring together all the pieces. Now, the final thing, which, you know, I think there's, the market reacted negatively to Tesla, but I think that's probably a buying opportunity because look, um, the stock went down, whatever, five or 10% today. Yeah. Yeah. But look, think about what they've put out there and what it's capable of. And I personally think given, and, you know, there's a couple of things that Elon really touched on in the talk track was, look, we collect, you know, millions or what, I don't even know what the number is, but let's just say a huge amount of data. And we, and there was a video that he showed during that where it showed all these like crazy scenarios of like people jumping in front of a car and like a, you know, a car crash happening right in front of you or someone spinning out or, you know, someone crossing the road really, really fast. And so all of that has been kind of given to them uh, through their existing car network, which then they can use to build models around. And so I actually think, and look, look how confident they were yesterday. They allowed people Very to confident. just use it inside, obviously, a, a square, you know. No safety court. driver because there's yeah. no steering wheel. So, yeah. 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 And they were letting anybody do it. And it wasn't just on a sort controlled of, environment. Yeah. So, so, obviously, got that, you know, it works in a controlled environment. So, on a grid system, it's ready to go now. But you have regulators and regulators... You know, they like steering wheels, they like review, they like side mirrors. So this is, I mean, really going to be challenging with regulators, I suspect, or not. I don't know what your take on that. Yeah. So I think like, you know, what we'll probably see is like the crawl, walk, run, because they know they can do it there. So you can imagine like in a, and I think companies are going to buy them first. So think Disneyland. Right. Think all, you know, all these kind of places that operate, think about like a retirement community in Florida. Right. So think about all these like, you know, places, um, like that a campus. Run. Yeah. Yeah. Like exactly. Places where there's golf carts or those yeah. little. Yeah. Things. Exactly. Yeah, easy. Easy yeah. And I think, I think you sell in there first. And then as the technology evolves, because he did say end of 26 or 27, I think by that point, we get to kind of ge widely generally available release. And I think that's the underestimation because they had enough confidence to allow people to, you know, just use it openly obviously in a, in a fixed area, but they, they weren't scared. They had no safety person in there. They had nothing on it, which is incredible. So that's my summary there. I think we get it in, uh, you know, what you call like, uh, fixed, fixed cordoned off areas. We get it there sooner than I think people both believe. 2027 would be a pretty good estimate. I think he said he could have those cars being manufactured. He, he, he it was interesting because he was like kind of, and I'll say 2026, but maybe 2027, he kind of hedged a little bit there, which kind of, maybe that's why the stock went down a little bit because maybe people want everything yesterday. But the truth is you got to get this right. And when you do, they have the ability to produce, I think they did 1.9 million cars last year. So he does have the ability to produce that volume. And so listen, you know, um, you know, he can put millions of these on the road, you know, in, in a short period of time. However, you know, just doing back of the envelope math, there are a billion rides a day in the US, a billion rides a day in the US, a billion rides of those rides, about 12 million of them are Lyft and Uber. So but 3%, 2% of rides in the US are done by ride sharing. It is a minuscule amount of the overall rides. And we're not even taking into account when you do that math, of course, public transportation uh, and other forms of transportation, bicycles, etc. So there's a big pie here. And of course, if this became cheap and ubiquitous, people might stop buying cars and use these and uh, people it would induce more usage. So it's a bright future. I do believe there'll be three, four winners in this, because it seems like everybody's solving it at about the same time. But there is a difference between 
Waymo and Cruise writing code top down versus building it off the data set. All right, founders, are you tired of doing all your own software and development? Do you need help, but you can't afford all this time it takes to find great talent? Are you dreading the endless interviews and email chains just to find somebody great? It takes six months. It takes a year. Well, what you need is Lemon.io. Lemon.io has thousands, that's right, thousands of on-demand developers who can help you, and they've done the work already to vet these developers, making sure that they're results-oriented and that they're super experienced. Of course, they got to have competitive rates, so they're going to take care of that as well. And great developers are so hard to find and integrate into your team, unless you're using Lemon.io, because they handle all that for you. They only offer handpicked developers with three years of experience at a minimum, and they have to be in the top 1% of applicants, right? If something goes wrong, don't sweat it. Lemon.io will find you a replacement developer ASAP. So many of our launch founders have worked with Lemon.io and they've had great experiences. So here's your call to action. Go to Lemon.io slash twist and find your perfect developer or the perfect tech team in 48 hours or less. That's right. And Twist listeners get 15% off the first four weeks. Stop burning money. Hire developers smarter and faster at lemon.io slash twist. So yep. maybe explain to the audience in plain English as best you can the two different architectures of these systems. We know one has yep. LiDAR, the other ones don't. Yep. Or Tesla, Tesla doesn't use LiDAR. The other ones do. So there's one issue here, but we've beaten that dog to death a million times. Let's talk about the model and how, how they're doing it. And so, you know, it's actually kind of related to that, right? Because, you know, what Elon says is a human has two eyes and it's sort of a head that moves around and that's all it has. And we're able to drive cars, you know, perfectly fine, right? That's what we're trying to mimic. And the reason, you know, others add sensors is all the, you know, these eyes, the eyes, the cameras can get covered. So you have an extra set of sensors that give you another view of the world and then use that. So now you take that into the model, right? Where if you're building a model that's using vision and using like a LIDAR and using say ultrasonics, you have to write code that brings that all together. And so what you're doing there is basically sort of, um, you know, I would I just call it like sort of the traditional approach across all those things and you're double checking and you, you know, it's, and it's, it's valuable that you have all that, but it's much more difficult because you're, you're having to have the, you know, code and the drive and all those things make decisions, right? What Elon and team did, and this is a gross simplification is they just took a model that would learn to drive by watching video. All they fed it was, you know, hours or, you know, maybe hundreds of millions or billions of hours of video that they had from the cars. And say, so just figure out what humans do and follow what they do. See how they sit in lanes. And so instead of coding and saying, you know what, what people tend to do is they don't drive right in the middle of the lane. They tend to move based on if the hug the left or if there's a car to the right of you they go to the right or if there's a bike they even go out yeah, and give it a little lane. extra grace yeah. in that yeah. period yeah i'll give you an experiment you can do if you make a right like a right turn but there's no one in like say the oncoming lane into the turn into the, the lane that you're turning into the road it'll actually go wide and go out into the lane into into the oncoming traffic and 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 that's because it's learned that from 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 humans right like you don't need to hug the right side curb if no one's in the uh, it's yeah, you're kind of scared to hit your rims or whatever it is, right? And so, so what it's learned to do is like just do that by watching humans say, well, there's no one in the lane, just stretch out into that left turn lane, the oncoming left turn lane. And you know, you can't write that in code. That's the nuance, right? And that's what you have to do if you build kind of a more traditional system versus this one is just watching all the nuances of humans and then implementing them on how they take curves and how they move around people. And you know, now it has to follow a certain set of rules. Like one of my biggest frustrations is it does this like full full stop and i'm always afraid of like someone from behind hitting the car yes yeah because, this is well i mean a waymo issue as well i saw somebody yeah. on threads today i went over to threads to see oh. what the reaction was there <laughs> and that's like that's like really the people who hate elon or yeah <laughs> hate you know they're, they're the left so they hate anything that's republican yeah. or gop yeah and you know one person was talking about waymo and they were like a san francisco bike person and you know how those people are like they kick your car literally like i had one kick my car and almost got into vista cups with the guy started yelling at my pregnant wife that's all another story putting all that aside um the um 
the the really interesting thing he was saying was I actually was I used to screw around with the crews and the Waymos, you know, I was like one of the guys who put cones on them kind of thing. And he's like, and now I walk with my dog and I love them because I know that they're not going to be looking down at their text or distracted and roll through a, a stop sign and hit me. They, there's no way they can hit me and they stop perfectly. So the other thing people are complaining about, and somebody on our group chat said this is it's kind of annoying that they're such square drivers and they kind of <laughs> take their time too much. And that's been my issue with, yep. uh, you know, using the Tesla full self driving FFD. in yep. Austin. Yeah. And, and is a uh, traffic surf and it is very, it's very cautious. Cautious. Yeah. But you know, you can put it on aggressive mode. You, you I have it on aggressive mode and it's, okay. it's still a okay. little scared of traffic circles, I think. So for the team over there, I think that's like probably traffic circles are not that common. So maybe it needs more training data. And then how people behave in traffic circles is wild. That's one of the other things I've learned in Austin. Like what I thought was the proper way to use a traffic circle is not how people in Texas use them. They use them like, I mean, they'll be I'm going here, through I'm them. Going. Yeah, they I'm don't going. slow down. Yeah. They yeah. just you know, yeah, it's a pretty interesting uh, moment there. Let's talk about this, um, the bus. I thought yes. the bus- Robovan. Robovan. I'm calling it the cyber sled. I think that this could change everything. If you look at this thing, he did mention it could be used for transporting goods. Okay, yum, yum. You imagine this thing with an Amazon person in it. Yeah. Imagine there's an Amazon rep inside of this thing and it's driving to the next destination. That rep is getting the box ready. It opens the doors, it jumps out, it tosses the box. Okay, that's going to save a lot of time. But what were your thoughts on this? It looks gorgeous, obviously, but I, I have my own thoughts and you saw my tweet, so we can jump into that. Yeah, look, like my, my personal thoughts, like very similar to yours, like this could be like a great basis for like a whole new generation of RVs, long distance commute, all that type of stuff, right? Let me get in, like you could own one, it could have your whole office desk in there, big monitor, sit down, work, you know, Starlink on top. It's like a, it's a, you know, all mobile things. office. I've been mobile looking office. at when yeah. I moved to Texas, I was like, you know, I'm going to get one of these mobile offices, like a sprinter van. And I, I started looking into them. They're not cheap. They cost like 200 grand. I mean, because they they dial them in or 300 grand or whatever. So I was like, well, that's a little ridiculous. But anyway, you can have a desk and you can have like a, a full on, you know, basically like it looks like a private jet inside. Um, but I thought these would be incredible for a mobile home. Imagine autonomy, a giant battery, and then you have a hurricane occur in Florida and they say, okay, send 10,000 of these to, you know, this stadium's parking lot or to these Walmarts. People come and you could rent one uh, or like you're at the World Series of Poker and you're you want to have your own trailer or you're at Burning Man or I don't know, you have your in-laws coming in and you order one to your house for a week for a hundred dollars a night and you park it in your driveway and now you have an extra bedroom. These things are so compelling to me um, because it's somewhere between a car and office and ADU. You think about the giant battery in there, like how long could that battery last? That could be a a battery that lasts 30 days and yeah. has enough roof space to put solar on it. So congratulations to the team. Their Optimus looks like it's doing well uh, yeah. as well. Well, last thing on Optimus, you know, just like the car, they had it out in the wild. They had it yes. serving drinks. They had it just mm. walking around talking to people and reacting to people. So, yeah. you know, I think what I really liked about this was they made it more real, right? And uh, it's kind of funny because the reaction wasn't that way, but by letting cars and letting people drive around and letting the robot walk around amongst people, those are big accomplishments. And what we forget, Jason, is just two years ago, Elon did the, um, or, you know, Tesla did like the announcement. Remember they had the guy, the suit, like, like kind of acting as a robot. I don't know if you saw yes yesterday, they had that one in like a gazebo and they were dancing. And, and like, you think about it two years ago, it was like dude in a suit. And then yesterday it's like, you know, robots actually dancing like in a gazebo. I think, you know, it's like bankruptcy. They, they asked somebody like, how did you go bankrupt? And they said slowly then all at once. Um, and I think that's what's self-driving is it's like this thing is taking forever because of edge cases and regulation and safety and competition and, you know, all, you know, what happens when there's an emergency vehicle? How is the public going to respond to it? But it's pretty clear that this is going to be the future. 
And then the build out is going to take time because even if you built 2 million of these a year and they did 30 rides a day, you know, 2 million of them doing 30 rides a day, 60 million rides, you know, you're still, it's, it's going to be like 1% of the rides in the United States. I mean, let alone the world. And then you have BYD that copies everything Tesla does. You've got Cruise, Waymo. I mean, there's a lot of players in here. So everybody wants to ask me about like my thoughts on Uber. Well, Uber went up tremendously because I think people realize if every single little J. Cal yum yum, a little yum yum, <laughs> um, you know, listen, and I own a lot of different stocks. Like it's not a big deal. Like if Uber goes up and down, you know, it, it, build out of this will be a two decade build out. I think 10 years from now, 10 years from now, we'll be at 20% of rides being automated. So 20, we're almost in 2025. So 2035, 20% of rides globally will be autonomous. 80% will still be done by drivers. Oh, dude, in 10 years, I'll, I'll, I'll take the over. I'll take the over, like way more than 20% in 10 years. Perfect. Okay, we got a $1,000 bet. Uh, we'll put that on the bets. This week in startups.com slash bets. There's an easy bet because here's the thing. I think what people don't realize is the number of rides out there is so giant and the number of rides are going to triple. What I learned from being an early Uber investor was that we were comparing it to cab rides, but then it quickly exceeded the number of cab rides. So you say, well, what happened here? Well, people left their cars at home because they were having a drink or was more convenient, et cetera. And then they started using it for commuting where they might have previously taken a bus. And they said, well, I'll, I'll go point to point because I can afford it because it's eight bucks. So a lot of great things going on here, but the number, the- Javen's paradox. It's Javen's paradox. You make more of a, so Javen, yeah, Javen was an a, a economist that basically uh, came up with this theory um, you know, in the late 1800s, British economists that said, if you make more of a resource available, uh, people end up consuming more of it, right? And so it was kind of in the steam engine era, right? Where it was like, oh, like uh, steam engines are going to change everything, but they start, con and, and what's it going to do to coal? And then all of a sudden they start con consuming more coal. And so anytime we've put something out there, actually a better example here is much more, is that farming, Right. So when we went to the industrialization of farming, um, what ended up happening is the consumption of food really increased, right? And like, you know, Americans are, every, everyone's more obese because it's just more of it's available. So we eat more of it. So it's just something that we tend to do is cheaper. Yeah. All right. Listen, interest rates are coming down, but it's still hard to raise a new round. Everybody knows that the last thing you need is to get bogged down in the minutia while raising. So if you're a founder overwhelmed with your cap table management, due diligence, and frankly, managing your investors, you need to check out Fidelity Private Shares. Fidelity understands that dealing with equity can be incredibly time consuming. That's why some founders joke that fundraising is a full time job. I'm not working on my startup. I'm, I'm managing my investors. I'm doing fundraisers and it shouldn't be right. With Fidelity Private Shares, you're going to easily manage your cap table and your data room. You're going to get a more accurate 409A valuation and you're going to get it quicker. You'll also be able to model the future of your company's equity, which you need to do as the founder, because this dilution adds up. People start signing notes. They don't know what the impact of those notes will be. And, you know, you want to model that out and you can fully automate your next funding round. So you stay on track. You seem professional, even if you're scattered. You know, you want to come across as very professional and buttoned up. And that's what having a great partner like Fidelity will do. And you're going to get great support from Fidelity, a great startup community. They do a lot of cool events with founders and VCs. I'm going to be going to some of them. So. Check out Fidelity Private Shares at fidelityprivateshares.com. Mention our podcast. You're going to receive 20% off your first year paid subscription. When I lived in LA, they were constantly making the 405 one lane bigger. And like when it stopped, <laughs> when they stopped one project and then they'd have two years, it, what, what happened was people from people would move further out from the city center because they're like, oh, I can live now in El Segunda and make it to Santa Monica or Century City for work. And then it fills up again. So the traffic, no matter how many lanes you did, would instantly fill up with induced traffic. But congratulations to the team there. And I think it's awesome. And I think there are going to be, I think, you know, we talked about this, there's going to be three or four players who are all going to figure this out to different extents, I believe, in the same 36 month window which means at the same time. Now, I know that's hard for people to understand that figuring out a technical problem in the same 36 window is the same time because there is a physics constraint here. You need batteries and you need resources. It would take literally 
to do the number of rides just in the United States every day, those billion rides, you're talking about 50 million of these cars. Like, I don't know if the battery packs are available for 50 million cars. And if Tesla makes 2 million a year and they were to double it every year and they went to four, then they went to eight. I mean, I don't know what the physics constraint of the factories and the batteries are, but, you know, it's going to take a lot. And so that's why I think 20% being automated, you know, in 10 years is a realistic goal. Right now we're below 1%. I think that means the pie is going to get so big. Yeah. And I think one, two, and three are pretty clear, right? Waymo, uh, Tesla, Cruise and right? Tesla. Yeah. And BYD and yeah. some of the Chinese well, companies. And I, I, can, can we give, we can add in Joby. Sure. I mean, and then going in the air is going to be part of the Joby, Archer, and uh, the other one. Yeah, there's. it's pretty clear that we're going to um, really have a bright future. So uh, congratulations to everybody. Um, let's talk a little bit about demos here. It's uh, We got to get back into it. All right. We got to get back into it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think okay. I'm going to go, I'm going to go a little bit different order because I'm generating something and it's taking longer. So no my problem. first demo, actually, Jake, I don't know if you've used this yet. Um, is, uh, let me, let me get my, uh, chat GPT open here uh -huh. and I don't know if you've, tr you've tried this. So let me get my share going here. So they have a new mode here and it's called chat GPT 4.0 with canvas. Have you seen this? I have not used it. I have. Okay. Seen. Okay. This right. came out this week. We, uh, yeah. Uh, write me an itinerary. Uh, okay. For a one day tech conference in austin i'm just gonna do it just for you jk all right and so what you're gonna see here is so now what it does is it 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 on the left hand side is your chat gpt and you can do this for writing code and a bunch of things but i think yeah. this is much more applicable to folks right and you can basically take a section of it highlight it which i'm going to do here oh, let me just highlight this properly how did the chat window move over to the left because that's what happens when you use this mode. And now so, so for these two sections here, I can say, uh, let's just say, make these more about intros and a special guest. And so now see what I, it, what it'll do is it highlights it right in place. <gasps> oh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. And so if you're working on something, basically mm. what it's doing is it will highlight, it'll let you work on the document while you're kind of editing it on the left-hand side, which is really cool. So weird that mine's not doing that. It's not putting me on the left-hand side for some reason. No, no, but are you doing 4.0 with Canvas? I am on 4.0 with Canvas, but it's not okay. showing me the left-hand column. I don't know why. Maybe I've got to log out and log back in, but um, this is really cool because it's yeah. editing the same document. Yes. This is what we've been waiting for because I, it's I knew constantly, it was yeah, yeah, so this is great. This is a 10 of 10, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is absolutely wonderful because we could put in today's docket or like a news program doc and yes. say like, make it shorter, make it longer, add something yeah, to this, I add did something the to that. <laughs> add a put it in a table, yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, we're starting to see the this is what we saw in Blade Runner when he is asking to analyze some uh, video clips and he's zooming in to the left and the right and it's responding in real time. That was a vision from Ridley Scott, you know, from the 80s. And uh, yeah, this is fantastic. Absolutely 10 of 10. Uh, yeah. You know, just great. Yeah. Right. And then this is daily use. This is use all the time. This yeah. is much better to iterate when it comes to uh usability and so you give it a give it a give it your grade j cow I'm, I'm giving it a 10 10 of 10 oh, 10 eight, yeah eight. okay all right yeah a, a, a plus for me a yeah. plus. What, what about for you yeah yeah i mean i look this was the one last thing that i always kind of struggle with which had gpt is like oh you're always having to copy paste or rewrite the whole thing and now you can edit it in place and so i want to make sure you get it enabled jake how like I, I i i feel for you right now i don't know what well oh you know what it might have been it might have been that i didn't wait till it was done like when does it actually open up the left it kind of chat? starts and it, it starts i mean i can do another one uh, we can mm. just do another one here what, what so, were you trying to do i'll do your one here Let's well i do. just said uh, you know create an itinerary for going to tokyo and Niseko to go skiing this winter um and it gave me like three days in tokyo and four days in Niseko. yeah but it didn't put it on the um oh 4.0 with canvas nope try again. yeah so see it's it kind of oh it's interesting mm. so for this one yeah, so it's open the left-hand side. I wonder yeah. why it's not doing that. Hmm. 
Somebody okay. from uh, one of our friends over there explained to us why it's not opening the left hand chat for every one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, strange, because I right? you yeah, just had that happen. It. Yeah, it just happened there, but it's now it's not doing it for me either. Hmm. Weird. Very strange. Uh, Very well, anyway, strange. this is uh, absolutely fantastic, and uh, I think this is the game changer. Yeah, that I've been waiting for. So yeah, congratulations okay. to the team over right. there. And you know, just using O one all the time and seeing it show its work of what it's doing has been extraordinary for me. I have been doing so many interesting, um, and like actually speaking of what we're talking about here, um, I was um, looking at you know I was having these conversations with people about. Let me share my screen. Um, one moment. So I was having these conversations with people about um, car production because I was trying to figure out how fast could we actually make enough cars to do all the rides in the U.S. and who makes the most cars. And oh, I did it. a table okay. um, with this, and you know, then it was missing some companies. So I was like, "Hey, where's BYD and all this? They make four point five. Then I said, "Well, where's Tesla?" And I said, "Well, Tesla's making." You know, I put Tesla in there at 4.5 and I was like, wait a second, that's not the number of cars they made. They made 1.8. So is that right? And then I was asking it to, you know, correct itself and it did memory updated, et cetera. And it's really like coming together. Um, and then I asked it how many cars are sold in the world per year. And it told me 70 million cars are sold per year. So then I was able to back into, well, in the United States, we need like 50, 60 million cars in order to have a fleet big enough to do all rides. Because I was like, what, what's all rides? All rides is probably 50 to 75 million of these cars because you got to realize some are going to be in a dense urban area. Some will be in the suburbs where, you know, you might do an hour long ride and then it takes 45 minutes to pick up the next person because it's across town or whatever, you know, it's or half an hour to pick something up. Long story short, it would take every car manufacturer in the world just to make enough cars to do the United States. And then on to the next country, on to the next country. You know, it's, it's, it's not going to be easy is the point. The world of tech startups is a whirlwind. Man, you got to navigate financial management, global expansion, and of course, strategic growth. It can feel like plotting a course through uncharted waters, but fear not. CLA is here to cut through the complexity. From entity selection to mergers and acquisitions, they'll elevate your startup journey, simplify your financial management, and they're going to be your navigator. CLA offers a comprehensive suite, including industry-focused wealth advisory, digital solutions, plus audit, tax consulting, and even outsourcing. What sets CLA apart? Their expansive footprint. They have more than 8,500 dedicated professionals across nearly 130 U.S. locations, all driven by a global vision. Their promise is simple, to know you and to help you. CLA is more than an accounting firm. They're your partner to success. So you need to have a trusted advisor by your side. One is going to help you navigate through all these important tax issues, get your accounting tight and do everything in between. It's time to take action. Visit claconnect.com slash tech. And don't forget to mention that your boy J. Cal sent you. That's claconnect.com slash tech. Start today. J. Cal, we can do your demo. Try this. So try it again. Okay. And say use Canvas if it's not. I, I use just was canvas. Yeah, I was getting annoyed. Yeah. And then see if you can do it. Okay, let's see. I'll pick or use, use canvas can mode. Use canvas mode to Well make pick the canvas mode, type it, and then if it doesn't do it yeah. at the, when your next prompt to say use, use canvas, canvas mode. Use canvas mode to uh, explain the total number of car rides in the United States. Give us citations as well. And uh, let's see if it does it. Oh, it did it. There you go. Uh, so, you know, and this is what, what I was trying to explain. To, yeah, sorry. I've got to stop sharing. So, you know, um, it, 344 billion rides annually. I mean, it's just nuts the number of rides that are occurring. Um, and, you know, if you say 344 billion, it's 365 billion days a year. So it's about a billion rides per day. And so, you know, now if I went to the side here, let's make a financial model. Um, how many um, automated cars would be needed to um, service all these rides? Autonomy, yeah. All these rides. Okay, let's see what it says. Let's see if it does it. Uh, so here we go. It's giving us a total number, the total number done. Average rides per car per day. Assuming a car can complete 30 rides a day. That's actually 
a pretty good estimate, by the way, because that's what an Uber driver can do is like 15 to 20. So two shifts, you could kind of get there. Uh, days in service a year. This assumes they operate 365 a day. That's a big assumption. We probably need to do that. Total car rides um, per car is... Uh, you have to bring them in to change tires, to charge. And the charging time, as you know, is to fully charge. It, well, maybe if you're doing a supercharger, it'll be less, you know, but still going to be some time. So it, it's saying here approximately 31 million. Um, and I say, let's say, assume cars are on the road 80% uh, of the time and charging 20%, and that they cost $40,000 to buy and uh, let's say 10,000 a year to insure and clean. And then we can, like, let's see if they can do this. Now, this is something you would be talking over the shoulder to an analyst, right? If you were in a, in a, in a venture firm or whatever, uh, or you were at Morgan Stanley and you're an analyst and you start, now you're here, you got the financial model says cost per car 40, annual insurance 10, total cars needed 40 mil 39 million. 1.5 trillion dollars to purchase the cars. 1.5 trillion is a lot of money, folks. You know, just to give you an idea, I think Apple may be sitting on 100 or 200 billion at any given point in time. Um, and so the operating cost would be 400 billion a year. So, you know, it's, it's not easy, right? Um, and uh, what would the revenue be if each ride was I don't know, uh, let's say twenty fifteen dollars uh, Now we can start to see what the revenue would be here. $15 a ride seems reasonable for a half-hour ride. Uh, and you can start to get to, let's see, uh, revenue $5.6 trillion. $5 <laughs> oh, oh, my God. That's at so $15, pre- right? So then you take yeah. 15 you take out the cost of buying all these cars, 1.5, the cost of maintaining them, 400, and you can see there's a big business to be at here. Uh, who knows what the margin would be, you know? But th this is incredible. I mean, wow. And it, what I love about this is when we were talking about crypto, we were trying to figure out the use case, right? You you were in crypto land for five years, right? You you have your you have almost a, you have a, you lost a half decade to crypto. No, I mean no, no, you no. did okay. You made a bunch of money on your investments, <laughs> but my point is. As a technology, we, yeah. we put all this effort into it. And then you look at what is happening with AI. Like, this is actual real value. If you're an analyst, I, I had to have a whole talk with my team the other day because they were giving me work before doing this. And I was doing this while I was asking the questions. And I'm like, your work sucks. Chat GPTs is awesome. Why don't you use Chat GPT and then come to me with your work? after you've polished what chat GPT has done. And they're like, are we allowed to do that? Is that fair? And I'm like, fair? Well, what are we talking about here? Like, let's let's kick everybody's ass into, that's I like, think. That's like going from typewriters to word processors. Like, oh, I can't use, uh, I'll check. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, gotta, I, I, get, I mean, like literally people are taking whiteout. People don't know what yeah. white, look up what whiteout is. There was a yeah. huge business oh in something called whiteout, where you would there take was. a little bit of a nail polish and you would, <laughs> you know, if it misspelled, <laughs> if you did a typo, you would put whiteout in and then blow it dry and then retype over it. Okay, we're not in whiteout mode anymore. This is a 10 of 10. I could yeah. sit here with you all day and come up with examples. Yeah. And now imagine this thing could put images in there, right. you know? like, And then yeah. I could say, here, um, put this yeah, in can. a simple table. Yeah. You got to share it. Uh, you got to share it. Yeah, oh, sorry. Your, your demo. just We're doing demos. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Sorry. I was trying to be uh, gracious here with you. Okay. Put this into a table. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Um, no, but you don't need to do, do, no, Jacob, 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 do, do it, do it different. This. Do it, do it slightly different. Okay. okay. Can. What I'm saying is you can highlight like a little paragraph oh. on the right hand side. So just highlight, say, see yeah. the paragraph that says that, no, no, on the, on the right hand side, on the right on hand side. On the right hand side. Okay. Let me yeah. Highlight the, that paragraph says total number of rides. Just, just highlight that paragraph right uh, up a bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, highlight that. Uh, no, wait, wait, wait. Now, as you just ask GPT, you can that. say, make this more spicy or expand on this. So just yeah, yeah. say something. Just, yeah. You know, get, uh, make this uh, more concise. And yeah, make this more concise. Let's see what it does. Yeah. And see what it'll do is it'll rewrite that. Right? Oh, so it goes wow. in and then boom. 
This is the superpower, J. Cal. Now you don't have to do it on the left hand side. You can just go to each bit and you can say, yeah, now yeah, you can yeah. say, oh, put an image of that. So you highlight it again and think, can you turn this into a graphic, right? Of, uh -huh. of the same paragraph. Say, I want to see this as a graphic or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is this is what we've been looking for. Yeah. Uh, well done yeah. to the team over there. A plus. A plus. I've been waiting for this too, because it's so obvious that this is not a difficult thing to do. And this is, you know, I got to give the team over at OpenAI credit, and I got to give the people at Gemini a bit of a warning here at Google. This entire workspace is dedicated to the UX of ChatGPT. You can't do this with Gemini because you shoehorned it into Google. Google should buy chat.com, the domain name from whoever. You've been saying there, this. You've been saying that. And make a dedicated new service. You can leave Gemini inside of search, but I need a domain name I go to that's different than Google that does this and i can then it could be it's this is powered by google you know it's from alphabet chat.com and then have a great app that complements it on ios and work on the ios app first we'll start releasing stuff to ios first so you get those top users and you know everything is hidden inside of an app you ask somebody how do you get to gemini they're like i don't know i don't know somewhere in my google interface i gotta hunt and peck for it 100 percent of the user interface must be dedicated to the AI. Uh, but wow, we're quick with oil. Give us another demo here. This is a great one. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, you're going to, it's getting daily use. You go, the, the weekly active, daily active remains solid for, for, uh, for open AI. Okay. Um, 400, next, three or 400 million people a month is what I heard. Yeah. So, yeah. Some, some 250 or 300, some, some really massive number and a big portion of those paying 20 bucks a month, which is also incredible. Okay. Um, we're going to uh, just give a quick shout out to Meta and a couple of demos real quick. And we're going to start with one of their models, which we have running on Grok, so I'll just show it there. Um, and so what, what Meta released a few weeks ago, uh, two weeks ago now, was uh, what they call vision models. And so I'm going to give a quick demo here. Let me get my screen share going properly. And I just did it before, so I'll reset it here. So let's just clear this out. So basically, uh, this this I'm going to use the 11 billion. So it's Llama 3.2. It's called vision. And so what you can do is, um, you know, you can give it like a picture of anything and you can give it a task and I'll just kind of turn this down a little bit. And so I just said, uh, so for the folks listening, I gave it a picture of a plate of food and I said, tell me everything that's on this plate, estimate the portion size and calories. And you do that. And basically what you'll see here is, and you see how quick that is now. So, yeah. so this is what's starting to happen in this universe, right? Which is- right. We're getting the same models, but instead of, you know, this used to take like 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and you know, right. this happened in 300 milliseconds, right? And so um, now you have to think about this combined with glasses and other things, Jake, how where it yes. can, this is the era we're going into where you can be looking at information but and the processing of it's even faster than our own brain. Mm. There is a really interesting uh, thing. It's really good that you brought up interface. On the new Apple AirPods, and I'm not an AirPods guy. I'm a, yep. I'm a, and I like the Pixel Buds. But in this new version, yep. that I just got the fours with noise cancellation. Yep. Same, same I got not the yep. in ear ones, but the fours with the noise cancel. I got the same, which I ones. prefer. Yep. Uh, there is um, a very interesting feature. When Siri is going to read you something, it says you can shake your head up and down. Uh, to say yes okay. or left and right. I saw that in the settings. Okay, yes. got it. And, and so it. it's really compelling because okay. it will say, Sonny just texted you a long text, read yeah. the text. And I go, and, and then, when I just nod, it reads yeah. it to me. Yeah, you heard like, yeah. Yeah, or you say no. Yeah. and it Or it's like, hey, you're, would you, because I use the walking thing. I like to track my walks as exercise. And yep. it's, it says like, hey, you would you like to end your outdoor walk? And I just go, Nope. <laughs> or I go, yes. And it ends it. So this is becoming really compelling. People are going to start doing shaking of their head or they'll have something on their wrist to kind of do small gestures to interact with the glasses that we saw from, you know, uh, Meta. And you put this all together. We're going to be constantly interacting with data and information if we want to. And it's going to yeah. ruin social settings and everything but it's going to make people incredible like the idea that in a poker game you could be wearing glasses <laughs> well they're going to have them but yeah you're going to have to ban them i i think yeah. we're going to have to ban those glasses in restaurants obviously in gyms 
And I think yeah. I, you know, I haven't been to a public gym in a long time. I go to my YMCA yeah. here in um, <laughs> uh, in, uh, in in Austin. I like the YMCA; it's great. Um, right. Well, it's good for it's like a fun for families and kids and stuff. Um, but uh, you know, like I, they ban. I think you can't have your phones out in the locker room. I think. Um, but I mean, these glasses, that's a whole nother level of, yeah. um, you know, invasion of privacy and then also distraction. So do you want those glasses? Do you want the AR glasses? Yeah. Well, so, so like, look, I think the era of, um, us, you know, getting superpowers because, you know, uh, other than getting like the brain implant and everything right. can't be done over audio. So right. what I kind of think about is what if you're wearing those glasses at work? And then it's just analyzing everything you're looking at. So instead of you having to kind of keep telling your, you know, employees to keep using chat GPT, it's just automatically like looking at whatever you're doing and giving you guidance and advice on it. Like, Hey, I can help you make this better. Or what do you think about this? So I think, you know, it has huge implications just in, in, in that setting. And you know, like there's a crazy stat someone told me this week, you know, what percentage of people like, like in America wear glasses? Yeah, it's like 60, apparently. So, it, yeah. And so, it's, yeah. And so, um, and then, you know, naturally everyone gets old and used to wear glasses too, right? So, it kind of adds up. I mean, I wear readers I, because yeah. when I'm doing yeah. the show, I, I uh, you know, I want to be able to crisply read it. And if I don't, yeah. I have to strain. And so, these 1.5s yeah. or 2.0s yeah. are, you I'm know, the really same. Well for yeah, me. I'm the same. One what did you think of the, um, the hack? Um, I had the two Harvard kids who built the facial yeah. recognition that would then go look up in public databases, information feed it to them. Yeah. And then they were like kind of tricking people into thinking yep. they knew them. You saw yep. the demo. I had them on yep. this week in startups this past yep. week with Alex. What are your thoughts on that? Look, I, I think like when people do that kind of stuff, it's like art of the possible, right? It, it, it's not like a practical thing because, you know, um, at the end of the day, the people that make those platforms won't approve apps like that. And, you know, you can do all these bad things. Like you can sit in front of a store and capture everyone's Wi-Fi. Like you, you can do all these like nefarious things all the time. Right. I think really what, look, you know who I want to have that is like the uh, security guys at like a, a baseball or football game. Right. Totally. Yeah. No, you I know, mean, if we started I, I having, ter if we had terrorist attacks, God yeah. forbid, at a stadium, yeah. uh, which has happened in the past in other countries, yeah. you know, people would be like, you know what? We need this facial recognition. Uh, James Dolan has uh, famously installed a lot of facial recognition at <laughs> Madison Square Garden um, and a uh, little controversies there on yeah. the margin. Yeah. But even, um, you know, uh, I, I have a big security system at yeah. my ranch and it knows faces. Um, and I put in everybody's face who works at the house, like uh, we have a plumber or an electrician. I, when they come to the house, I put their face, I put their name. Hey, that's Carlos. Hey, this is Jane, whatever. Um, and then if somebody comes on the property who we don't know, it tells me and I get a little alert. Hey, there's an unrecognized face or a license plate on the property. So it knows certain, you know, trash pickups, license plate and others. Yep. And that's all coming to corporate software and then it's going to make its way down to consumer yeah yeah all right so meta's new vision models what's your grade i mean yeah i gotta give it a b plus i mean it's it's really solid and I, it's going to get better and better i mean this where, where do you give it uh, i mean look I, I think the fact that it's open source for me is a plus right okay. you are now able to do in open source what you can do with the best uh, models that are there and i think that's better for society so i give i give them an a plus right. for yeah. putting vision models out there and look this th think about what it took to make a calorie counting app jk probably someone came through your incubator at some point we didn't want to do yeah, it yeah. and and look like this did it in 300 milliseconds without we actually had one years ago like a decade ago yeah. that pitched us that was using people in manila yeah uh you know like mechanical turking it you would send the image they would look it up online and they would make their best estimate and give it to you and they would do it for you know two cents or five cents through mechanical turk and people were paying 50 bucks a month for the service so you know they yeah even if they abused <laughs> it and used it 50 times a day it still wouldn't yeah. match their subscription price yeah. uh absolutely fantastic and, yeah. and um w let's pause for a second here w what does this mean you know that the language models are catching up to what OpenAI is doing, the leader in the space, very quickly. And there doesn't seem to be that much distance between the models, I would say under a year, six months to 12 months behind. Yep. Six months. But the interface, six months. But the interface 
seems to be where OpenAI is making, you know, really great advances. So it's really fascinating and it's a, it's a good point. You've highlighted it, right? I think what they've realized, and I think uh, their revenue was like leaked and it showed actually more of their revenue is coming from chat GPT than their API. Basically, what I think is exactly what you said, chat GPT is, you know, um, an open AI are becoming like a consumer facing application. Whereas, you know, meta, and we're going to do a couple more meta demos in a second, is focusing on the fundamental technology and integrating it into their interface, which are consumer facing applications. So what you're seeing and for them putting it out there in the open to make it the community, make it better is important, but their core business is not to be selling, you know, tokens as a service to people or, or selling intelligence. Right. And so that's the interesting intersection that I see, you, you know, or maybe crossroads is a better word across what chat GPT is doing now. And, you know, if you take a step back for all the, you know, let's just call it chaos for lack of a better word that's happened at, at OpenAI. If you think about everyone that's left for a second, J. Cal, right? They all the people that have left have been pretty much like were focused, like not on, like you know, they were there as like kind of uh, core research types, right? Better for the world types for real open AI. And as open AI commercializes, it's looking like a different business. And so it's looking like an app business, it's looking like an office suite or something. It's yeah, starting to yeah. feel like productivity software. It's like yeah. it feels like a and sales so, force. Yeah. If you're an AI researcher, maybe you're kind of like, oh, well, this I signed up to work at open AI and build intelligence for the world. And now these guys are like, oh, we're just going to build like, you know, commercial product, which is totally fine. Yeah. And with all this money being poured into it, it feels like this is getting commoditized fast, faster than anything I've ever seen. But that's why them having the users is important, right? Because I think, you know, having, you know, is 200 it? million paying users. Yeah, you got to give them I guess so. That. Yeah, people, that yeah. is hard to do to get people to take yeah. their wallets out. So a couple of million paying users, pretty impressive. But the other point of it is like, I think, you know, using Siri, I've been using the beta. I've talked about it on the show and all in a bunch. I feel like they're going to intercept the first 50% of queries are yeah. going to be done by Siri, Alexa, Microsoft Copilot. Um, yep. Google, et cetera, people who already have scale on their devices. Yep. But you're going to expect that for free versus what we were just doing. You're going to willing to pay for that because you're like, oh, this is my workflow versus I'm just, you know, if I'm doing q and I just want it for free. At 20 bucks or 30, I think we have the enterprise version. So maybe we're paying 30 bucks a person and maybe yeah. half my people are using it. And I, I think I'm like, if you're not using it at my company's like, I don't, you're not going to be on my companies for long. I just, it's going to become obvious that you're falling behind. For $360 a year, if your average employee is 50, 75, 100, pick your business, 150, depending on where you're located in the world, 1% or 0.01% or 0.1% of your employee salary is nothing to pay. It's kind of grossly undervalued. If you, if you told me this product was $500 a month, I would pay for five seats. I wouldn't yeah. pay for everybody. I would yeah. make sure they're using it, but I would have five people on it. I mean, things like the Wall Street Journal cost four hundred dollars a year or something. I don't know what it costs. Something crazy. Um, so yeah, Bloomberg, this is all that Bloomberg, stuff, right? that stuff yeah. can add up. Yeah. And oh yeah, this is providing serious, serious value. Um, yeah. And I guess Canvas and O One are not available for free. So yeah, I, I do think yeah. there's there's a case to be made. But if 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 you're a Microsoft or Google, I'm making all this free. I'm taking everything chat GPT does and I'm it's the teams. You're going to do the teams and you're going to yeah, do the I'm going to bundle work. it and make it for free. I'm <laughs> like literally going to make it super for free and yeah. just, you know, take the oxygen away from them. Right. Yeah. So that people who, but right now this, you know, there's no domain name for me to send my team to for Google to go use Gemini like this. Right. And the multiplayer mode is the thing that I want. I want to use Canva canvas with you or with another person so when we're building the docket we're working on it together that, that's got to be close they they can't be i mean multiplier you know, modes yeah, yeah it's gonna be super but you can already close. share it with each other it's just okay. but then we it gets forked right when you share yeah. a discussion it gets forked and did you notice when you create them now it asks you when you share it it asks you if you want to publish it publish it yeah. this yeah. is going to be crazy for seo yeah. yeah um so when you share a link and you copy it there's a little chat but there's a little button. It doesn't work with can Canvas, but with the regular one, um, yeah, it does let you share it uh, publicly. So that means the the Google index is going to be filled with conversations. I mean, it's wild. Like, what about the biggest hack, right? To get more traffic in is basically just open your index of questions up and then basically everyone's coming to you. It's so smart. It's all the work <laughs> that went into Quora is now they, yeah. man, these, these guys scrape <laughs> Quora and they're going to republish Quora. 
<laughs> a thousand times. I mean, if I'm Cora, I'm suing the hell out of them. Um, if they, I mean, I don't maybe know what they have, they're paying they have for. A deal. Maybe they have a deal. Maybe they, I think they have th a deal. This, this just guts everybody who's got a business. Is, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's do another deck. Okay. Okay, we're gonna keep rocking. We got we got a few more here. Uh, okay, this this actually finished. So I'm gonna go back to um, and I don't know if you guys did this already. So if we did, we'll 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 just go quickly here. Yeah. So I had this like MIT uh, management fall 2024 review, and it's just like somebody had sent it to me on WhatsApp. And okay. so basically, I didn't want to read it, so I just dropped it in Notebook LM, and it turned it into a 13 minute podcast. <laughs> and so Hilarious. so basically, so like I'm gonna just kick it off. We'll listen to the first. Hey everyone, welcome back. So it seems like you're all about diving deep into how organizations oh, yes. are tackling change right now. Those MIT Sloan Management Review articles you've got stacked the up. NPR yeah, voice. we see you. Don't what worry, this isn't about drowning you in information. <laughs> We're here to pull out those golden nuggets, the insights oh, yes. that'll really get you the thinking. Insights. <laughs> and maybe spark some ideas for and how here's to my female co-host because we're woke and you know this it's is interesting NPR how coming many parallels you. there are. All right, okay, so Jacob, I actually like love I love it. I love uh, it. I have think you it's tried right. that mode yet? Have you tried it? I haven't or, used it yet, but I okay. think that it's fantastic that one of the modes of consumption will be make this into a conversation that I can listen to. Yeah. Fantastic. And, like I want to learn physics, okay. but I don't want to learn it. Like reading the textbook or I don't want to do Q&A with it. I, I want to listen to a podcast about it. And so, Jake, the hack that people are doing now, and I'm going to tell you this is they take their diary, right? And you know, some people diary at different levels and then, or their feelings about a certain situation. So let's say you and I are having a conflict, right? And I go and I write myself like a three page letter of like, ah, oh, these are all the things that like, I yeah, love about Jake, Jake this, this, you know, and, yeah, and, okay. making fun of yeah. me. And yeah, exactly. My money and poker. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And I write it all down and then they put it into to notebook LM and then they have two people And they make a podcast. Yeah. Oh my God. And they I mean, this is it. And then you get a, like a third party view of your situation. It's really incredible. I mean, think about this like for a coach kind of situation or a therapy kind of situation or a mediation situation. It's, it's kind of in that zone. And I had a lot of people pitch me on coach, not coaches, but like therapists, like virtual therapists. And we had some spicy ones that were on earlier, like a year or two ago. So there is something here of being heard is a human, very cathartic for humans. When you feel heard, and that's why I think, you know, if the AI can pull this off in an authentic way and it makes you feel heard, um, that could lower people's anxiety where they're like, hey, I'm having feelings of jealousy. I'm having feelings of anger towards my boss. He's a jerk. His expectations are high. He's giving me a hard time about AirPods and all this stuff and how to do like perfect production <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, my boss is in oh, things and stuff or well, whatever. <laughs> like, it's like, oh yeah, you know, but your boss just wants you to get the best out of you. <laughs> you know, that the company just wants to produce great content. And, you know, there's a reason why, you know. Yeah. Okay. Now I can sleep at night. You know, like I, yeah. it's kind of cool actually. I yeah. have no judgments. Like, I think it's kind of yeah. cool that people can find. So I want you to try it this week, Jake. I want you to diary one day okay. and I want you to I'll put do it. it in there. And, and then, then we'll like, do it next one. We'll I'll do, do it, it actually. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. All my Great. feelings. Yeah. Uh, from one day. Do it after you record the all in pod. <laughs> Absolutely. You're doing great. Oh, I, I, I give that one a B plus. I think it's like okay. a cool feature. I don't think yeah. it's gimmicky. But you're going to try it next week. You're going to try it. I will it try, but I'm giving it a B okay. plus because I don't think it's a gimmick. And I think there's, if they did podcasting, which feels like a gimmick, they could also do a therapist. They could do a coach. They could do a best friend. They could do your mom or dad. And that's where I think this could get really interesting is if you took whoever the great advisor or friend you had in your life was. And then you capture them like, Ooh. I mean, that wow. could be very special for people. You know, if your grandma yeah. always gave you the best wisdom and advice, yeah. and then you said, hey, here's everything grandma, like, and grandma was one of us with a yep. big online footprint, yeah. right? Or you just had AI talk to grandma before you, you pass it yes. for an hour a day and just ask her questions. And then you could say, hey, I got grandma forever. Yeah. Like I'm actually getting a little sad about it, thinking about my dad. My dad's sick. Yeah. And so I've been thinking about it and like I'm sorry, man. you know, him being yeah. gone and whatever. Yeah. yeah. You know, how long he's got left. He's eighty one, you know, he's a cancer survivor. Like I'm like, ah, oh, my mom and dad, I want to capture it. So I was talking to my little it, brother, like, hey, maybe we should do like an interview series with my dad yeah. and just record it so we have it for our kids. 
Just record, just do it. No, I, honestly, just record it. And then you don't have the arrest, turning it into AI and all is super easy, but just record it. Just go and do a couple hours and you'd be surprised. Yeah. And do it as in like, I would say, do the history of the family from his perspective and then do, you know, like top, Top big. I need the of his prompts. Life. I need like yeah. to get the prompts. So I think that's something where I ask ChatGPT for the prompts, dude. Like, I know. I was like, just thinking <laughs> ChatGPT Canvas would do it yeah. for me and get all the yeah. prompts together, and then I could actually have ChatGPT do it with him. That would be very yeah. interesting too. Yeah, I think like, this would be a that, great business. I don't know why this I, doesn't exist. I think app. some. I think some folks will do it, but like. Yep. Um, but what I know, what I think you could do is just give the prompts to him and then have, you know, some combination, you know, of Josh or someone just go sit with him, record him. Like he can just read out the questions. So he doesn't have to come up with them. And then he answers them. And then, you know, I'll help you do it, Jacob, if you want to do it. Uh, I think it's a great idea. Uh, last two, last two. Okay. So um, Meta, Meta has done two things recently, which are as follows. Uh, the first one is they haven't released this for use yet, but they've created a, a movie gen model. And, you know, just to kind of show you like what it's capable of, it's, you know, Beautiful. pretty outs Yeah. And look like, um, you know, we've seen this stuff before and this is tied into some of our bets, but like, I think this is just getting better and better and better, right? The fidelity so, is getting there where yeah. if you weren't paying attention, you would think it's yeah. real. Yeah. And, and obviously a koala surfing, you wouldn't think is real, but you yeah, know, the but, stuff that's you know, not koala, you would think is yeah. real. Yeah. yeah. Like that's pretty good. And, you know, we're just kind of looking at some interesting videos here and then you can edit them with text. Right. Yep. So you can have this video and you can say like, Hey, add pom poms to this or replace this uh -huh. person with a dinosaur. And then, you know, this produce personalized videos, like of like a picture of yourself saying, Hey, make me a, you know, scientist doing Unbelievable. something with a, with a, you know, beaker or whatever it is. Uh, soundtrack, sound effects, pretty incredible where this is going. So it really shows yeah. the power of them and having lots of data like they have. And, um, they haven't released this to everyone, but it's very, very exciting. So. Um, maybe we don't grade this one yet because it's not released, but it kind of shows the power of what, what's potentially coming our way. And that's Meta's video llama yes. version. Yeah, it's called it? Meta guys. Movie Gen. Meta Movie Gen. Yes. Amazing. I think Zuckerberg's, you know, really doing something special here with this open source stuff. I think we're going to look back on this and be like, hmm, this is, uh, he, he made a strategic he made a very strategic decision that I think is going to pay off massively for him. I, I completely agree with you. Okay. Last one here is, uh, um, and that one's a B plus too. I mean, I, okay. I, I, with the processing speed of these is the other one I'm wondering about is like, remember they were all limited to five seconds. Have they yeah. gotten past that now? No, they, they haven't released them yet. I think that's Got what it. they're all kind of working on. Right. And so the last thing here is like meta AI. I don't know if you use it, Jake, how you, you should. And, and, uh, you know, it's kind of like their, their chat GPT. Now it's designed a little bit more for fun than it is for, I think, kind of like the workflow stuff that we were talking about, but where it's super powerful. And, and I'm just going to do this. So I got a picture of you and what you can do is you can give it a picture and this is like a more modern one. And then you can say, edit this image and you can say, uh, make me bald, <laughs> right? And what you'll see is it's like so powerful um, that like, you know, all these image um, things that were coming out the last couple of years, they've combined all that functionality and basically just, you know, this is like J. Cal, uh, Mark and <laughs> Mark Andreessen. I don't actually, I kind of look good bald. I mean, it's, it's a look. I look like yeah. I'm. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, who is that and, guy uh, who played uh, the crazy guy in the M. Shyamalan? M. Night Shyamalan series. There was like Glass, and then there was the other one. And then there was this guy who plays like a guy with multiple personality yeah. disorder. With, I think it was um, James McAvoy playing him. Okay. But I look like Professor X. I like it. I like my yeah. Professor X. Love yeah. It. So, yeah. So, anyways, like, look, that's what you can, that's what huh. you can do here. And you can say, you know, as you can say, give me a uh, beard. All right. Oh God. Here we go. Yeah. I, and, uh, I can never grow a good beard. Yeah. For some reason it's not. Let me go back hmm. and do it. Let me, I might have to just re-upload or restart again here. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's hilarious. It. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, so you can say, uh, but it, it's, uh, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, th and then I think they're going to have to start watermarking these, correct? Because, like what is reality? Like we don't make people watermark face tune up or those tune up things that I know. We don't, we use. don't, we don't. So, yeah. Yeah. So look, I think, you know, and you can do all kinds of fun stuff with this. We're just playing around here, but, uh, right, give this a B solid yeah. B. It's yeah. Fun. But you know, they've, they've taken all the image, image editors and all that. Oh, that <laughs> is not a, so that would I mean, a good job. That actually, 
I look like a hipster. I like, <laughs> hey, would you like a soy latte? I feel like I'm making you a, a craft cocktail. If you put suspenders I was gonna on, say craft cocktail, craft yeah, cocktail. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. make you a smoky <laughs> old fashioned with a lump of sugar in it and a yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna so, make you an overpriced cocktail. <laughs> Let's go in Austin. There's a bunch uh, of places in Austin. I'm yeah, finding. yeah, there, there are. They're there big are. into cocktail culture here. And, and, and that mustache and beard. beard and that mustache. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, a, that's a waxed mustache. It, it, I look like a it, super villain. It, it, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, this has been an amazing episode. Welcome back. Uh, let's do it every two weeks. You got to store yes. all these up, and we're going to get dialed in here. Uh, and um, he is uh, Sandeep x dot com slash Sandeep. I am x dot com slash Jason and. Get, let's give a little promo here for Grok. I think you yeah. got tons of developers. Anything coming up on the calendar? 500,000 developers. You know, we have the fastest automatic speech recognition. So look, Jacob, one of the things that we can do if you, if you haven't done it is we can take almost all of, uh, or not all, we could take all of uh, this week in startups. 2,000 audio. plus episodes. Yeah, yeah. And we could, uh, and we do it at 250x real time. So basically, you know, whatever time frame that is. So let's say that's, uh, you know, to, let's call it 2,000 hours divided by 250. In that much time, we can turn, we can get transcript forever. Love it. 10 hours. Beautiful. Yeah. We can do it in Love 10 it. hours. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. All right, everybody. We'll see you. And uh, where can people find out more about Grok? Just go to grok.com, G-R-O-Q.com. All right. And we'll see you all next time on This Week in Startups.